This is what one year or a little less than one year of taking notes in my Bible looks like. Okay, a lot of people have been requesting for me to do a flip through of my Bible. Now, this particular Bible, I actually started about halfway through last year, but I really started using it as my journaling Bible at the beginning of 2023. And so we are about 347 days through this year. So this is what 347 days of note taking in your Bible looks like. Now, I do not do beautiful Bible journaling. I simply take notes in my Bible so that I can learn the Word of God. It is nothing more than that. And I'm a big believer that whatever it takes for you to be able to get the Word of God written on your heart and deep down into your spirit, that's what you should do. Writing in your Bible is not desecrating a holy temple. The paper and the book itself is not a temple. It is not what is holy because the Word of God is alive and it is active. It is not confined to paper and ink. And the written word, physically writing it with a pen, is no different than a publisher putting footnotes in the bottom in a typewritten font. So for those who are gonna come at me and say, you are ruining the holy word, no I'm not. The word of God is moving. There's nothing that I could write in this Bible that is going to kill the word of God, I assure you. And if this is what it takes for me to get the word on my heart so that I can then share it with others, then that's what I'm gonna do. And I encourage you to do the same if that's what it takes for you to learn. Now, if you are new to this channel, you've never been here before, I shall let you know that we actually have a daily Bible study right here on YouTube. So for those of you who are going to say, you can't even read whatever you write on your Bible, I assure you that if you come to my Bible study, you will see that I read every single word that has been typed in this Bible and also the words that I write. So let's get into it. Let's take a look. This is the ESV single column journaling Bible by Crossway. I chose this one because I thought it was real pretty, but as you can see, it is falling apart now. But as they say, right, a dirty Bible is a clean Christian, or is it the other way around? A clean Bible, dirty Christian, I'm not sure. So in the beginning here, I just have some hand lettering. So these are some of the things that I like to do. If I hear a quote, this one says, the Christian life is basically a series of new beginnings, Alexander White. I will write down quotes, uh, but we started it off in Genesis in the beginning of this year. And you can see here, I have this full page of notes that I took, uh, some hand lettering once again. I use all kinds of things. Now, one of the questions I get is, do you have a color coding system? No, I don't. I simply use different colors to highlight scripture. So I will read through, I will highlight, and once something changes a thought where I think, mm, I'm probably gonna have to write some notes on this sentence here, I'll change color and I will start highlighting with that color as well. So I usually start off in the beginning of the book trying to get a good understanding who's the author what is the context who is the audience and that's where i begin with my study uh, i use a lot of post-it notes so in the beginning when i started i was using a lot of transparent sticky notes because for me that was what worked best for me to be able to see through the text if i needed to reference this bible once again but what i'm thinking is i probably will not go back into this bible but this will actually become a gift to my children. And so I may look at this as I start my new Bible, but I do plan to start new Bibles every single year so that I can start fresh, you know, because getting into the word, even as many times as you read it, it always seems like it's brand new, does it not? Uh, sometimes when I have lots of notes, I will use different papers to write them on. This is just a piece of newsprint and I'll just stick them in there. Sometimes I even glue them in as you will see, but again, Lots of notes. And another reason why I do different colors is so that my notes that I take will coincide with the scripture. So I know what to look at whenever I get back to reading the word. So I just have smaller post-it notes here. And you know, to me, there is no right or wrong way to take notes. You can take notes in a notebook if you want, but for me, this is what works best. And because I am holding a Bible study, I had to do it this way because if I had a notebook and I was trying to go back and forth, it probably wouldn't be 
efficient for me. Now you can see here, I started getting into uh, some of my other post-it notes that I have in my collection. A lot of people ask me, where do you get all your cute post-it notes? A lot of them are from the years and years of just collecting post-it notes. I used to do planning. I used to do journaling. And so anytime I could get my hands on any sort of post-it notes or stationery, I would buy it. So I've got stacks and stacks of post-it notes that I put in here. Now, right here is actually a little notebook that I got from a friend of mine. And I ended up gluing these pages in. So I just take a little bit of PVC glue or a glue stick and I just stick it right in the spine of my pages and then it just stays in there really well and sometimes I have to stack some of the post-it notes so this is an example of a page where yeah you're right I probably won't be able to go back in here and you know read through the Bible very well without removing all of these post-it notes so that is why I probably won't use this Bible next year in my Bible study I'm gonna have to use a brand new one uh, sometimes I'll use washi tape to post in because you know how post-it notes can be. They sometimes lose their stickiness or sometimes I'll even add in pages, larger pages, and I'll use washi tape to be able to do that. I think this is one of my crazier pages here. <laughs> And what are all of these notes? I remember somebody commented on my Bible one time and they said, you know, the Bible does not need to be rewritten. I don't know why you feel like you need to rewrite everything that the Bible says. I assure you I'm not rewriting the Bible. What I am doing is I'm taking breakdowns from scholars, from commentaries and uh, study Bibles and just adding some information in there so that it gives me more context so that I can have definitions of words that I don't know. Uh, sometimes I'll ask myself questions. Where is your identity? What are you marked by? Are you marked by the blood? So for me, this is application as well. And here you can see I actually printed the ephod onto a piece of vellum. And same thing, I just glued it right into the spine so that I could have this picture because I'm a visual person. And obviously this is not going to work for everyone. I assure you there are some people looking at this right now saying, oh my gosh, that is driving me batty. That is making me crazy. And if it is, then don't do it. You know, this isn't for you. So you can see I started taping in some more pages because I felt like I had some bigger notes that I needed to take. And so that's how I did that. I just washi taped it right in. More hand lettering with some of my favorite hand lettering pens. And I have smaller post-it notes as well. A lot of them I got at Target Dollar Spot, some of my post-it notes. But again, most of them are from collections of different subscriptions that I had for <laughs> different planners, Planner Society, Planner Addict, all of those. So here's another piece of vellum that I put in. This was regarding the clean and unclean foods. Let's see what else do we have that might be a little bit different. See, to me, this doesn't interest me. I'm just like, this was just my notes. But I know some people really like to <laughs> see this page for page. Now here I used a piece of tracing paper. This is a little bit thinner than vellum and I actually prefer this, I think, because it actually printed a lot more bold than the vellum did. And not only that, but it's just thinner, so it creates less bulk, which in a bulky Bible, you need less bulk by the end. And here again, more tracing paper of little diagrams of the temple. And then I'll use some of these kinds of notepads that you can find at like TJ Maxx or Ross. I have a lot of those as well. So whenever I have lists or anything that might take up more space, I'll use those. Here's a piece of that newsprint that I glued in. And I do make sure, that, well, usually, actually later on I started doing it, where I would make sure to put the scripture that is referring to the note because I did find that some of my post-it notes would fall out of my Bible and I'd be like, where does this belong? Here's another washi taped piece inside. Oh, another crazy page. I would never be able to get in here <laughs> without removing it all. Some more notes on a larger notepad. I probably could glue this in, but you know, I don't actually take this Bible with me anymore. This is a piece of parchment paper that I wrote on. Uh, I used to take this Bible with me to church, but as it became so bulky, it got a little, di little difficult to carry. And I don't really take 
my sermon notes in my Bible because I like to just keep it to Bible notes and uh, less application, less sermons. So I'll actually use something like a notebook to take my sermon notes. And, you know, Bible journaling doesn't have to just be in a Bible. I mean, you absolutely can do it inside of a notebook. And so that is what I kind of did here for a season where I would decorate my pages and these happy planner or happy journals, I guess I should say, are really great because you can actually take the page out. You can go sew in it if you want to, decorate it. And uh, I used all kinds of stuff, stencils, and I would do a little bit of journaling here and there. So lots of really cute things, using some of my junk journal supplies. Sometimes I don't, you know, look, sometimes it's just black and white, but you know, it leaves room for you to be creative, or if you don't feel like being creative, you also don't have to. So. It's just another way of being able to take notes and journal the word and what God is speaking to your heart and also being creative. So for some, if you're not a creative type, then that will not interest you once again. <laughs> but that is what I love to do. I actually bought a new journal or new Bible for next year. And it is an interleaved Bible, which I bought that Bible to actually do Bible journaling. I mean, to do the artsy work in it. The Bible is amazing because it has one blank page, every other page. And so I was going to use it for, you know, making pretty, pretty things in it. But, oh, here I actually sketch sometimes. Um, but I decided not to because looking at how many notes that I take through my Bible, and I know it's just only going to increase as time goes on, I needed as much real estate as possible just for writing. But uh, those pages are really great because they're really thick and so I don't have to worry about my highlighters seeping through or my pens, even though I've kind of honed in on which highlighters and which pens work best. Uh, right now, I like to use the Mr. Pen felt tip pens. Uh, my favorite ink pens are these Energel RTX pens. I like the needle tip 0.5 just because it's a lot thinner. And I also like the 0.7 just because it writes smooth, but sometimes the 0.7 can leave some shadowing on the other side of your page. And other people are asking, what do you use to get all of these notes? Well, like I said, I dig into my study Bible, which is actually the New King James Version study Bible. I have it right here. This is, let's see, who published this? Thomas Nelson. This is a Thomas Nelson New King James Version study Bible. This used to be my Bible at one time when I only highlighted and I did not take any notes, but incredible information inside that Bible. I also use the John Corson commentary, which I bought a long time ago. I've been using that for many years and I get just like the Bible, it does not get old. <laughs> uh, so I use that and he has more application style commentary and then i also use the life application bible commentary so if you have the life application bible this is pretty much all of the commentary in a actually i think there's more in this series so i bought the entire series of the life life application bible commentary and i've really been enjoying using that lately i wasn't using that for the longest time i just started using it uh, but previously i was using my study bible Oh, here's some some church notes. <laughs> I just throw them in my Bible. I was using the Enduring Word website, which is free online for those of you who are looking for something to do some extra studying. That is a really great commentary because he takes from different theologians, different teachers from the past, but he also has his own commentary in there as well. And I find that it has been very scholarly and very helpful. I have recently just bought a bunch of Bible commentaries that I will probably tap into, but I'm not going to use all of them. I kind of go through seasons of what I like to use for my studying, just because there are some commentaries and some teachers, here you can see I did more sketching, that, you know, I, I won't necessarily agree with some of their doctrine and some of their teachings. And so I will consult multiple sources 
and allow the Holy Spirit to kind of speak to my heart because I think that's what's most important. I always tell people that even in my own Bible study is, you know, don't take what I say as gospel. I have an opinion and I have a conviction, but if that is not in agreement with your spirit, you know, we don't need to fight over it. Uh, If you really feel the need to correct me because you feel like I am, you know, giving false information that might affect someone's salvation, then by all means, lovingly correct, um, because I think that that is important for the building up of the church. But otherwise, if it is something that has been long debated, I don't even think it's worth trying to fight over it because Paul talks about unity so much in the Bible and he often faced this between the Jews and the Gentiles when they were going through the early stages of building the church. You had all of these Jews who were still caught up in legalism and because so, they were often trying to impose their thoughts, their regulations on all of the new believers. I'm going to kind of flip through because I don't feel like I have a whole lot going on here aside from just highlights and notes. <laughs> trying to see if there's anything new or different. Uh, here's another piece of tracing paper. But, you know, I'm like, if it's if it's not going to affect a person's salvation and if it's not essential or a central part of the gospel and it has been debated for a long time, then we might have to agree to disagree. Now, some people will fight even that and say, no, I need you to say what is right in their eyes. (laughs) So, you know, it can get a little touchy sometimes. And that's the risk that we take when we put ourselves out there in teaching positions. I had a hard time even accepting that for the longest time that I was any sort of teacher. But, you know... I I don't want to squash the gift that God has given to me. More church notes. And I definitely don't want to deny it. So you can see more hand lettering here. Uh, For the most part, everything that I write in here is more or less scholarly information that I have acquired from those sources. Sometimes when I have enough room, I will write something personal. Like I love reading a proverb a day and this is the best one to end my month. It sets the tone to finish strong and start strong for the next month. My prayer is to be the radiant bride. So I'll sometimes write my prayers in here and it's with the hope that one day when my children, you know, go through my my Bible that they will see my heart and they will see the prayers that I had written, not only for myself, but for them as well. And, you know, I believe that that is one of the best gifts that we can leave our children is our faith. And that that's a, the, one of the greatest legacies that we can leave behind. So more sketches. So that is my hope with my Bible. Right now, they just think I'm crazy. <laughs> but it's really sweet because they know, here I have some... What is this? Holographic tape. They just, they know that the morning is devoted to this Bible study and they don't bother me. Okay, here's where it got crazy. What chapter is this? Matthew, of course. When we had to really start busting out the big guns once again, all of the post-it notes because so many notes in the Gospels. I tried to start writing a little bit smaller, but you know, you still don't ever have enough room when it comes to the words of Jesus. (laughs) So... Lots of post-it notes, but we are finishing strong here. We are currently on day 347 of reading through the Bible in 2023. By the time somebody else watches this on a later date, we will have been finished. But guess what, guys? We're starting again in 2024. And so I definitely invite you, if you have a desire to, you know, learn the Word of God and to grow deeper in your knowledge, but mostly in your relationship with Christ, because that is where your faith will grow, is right here in the Word. It says, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. And how are you going to ever really truly get to know somebody if you aren't talking to them, communing with them, learning about them? I mean, before we ever, you know, get to know people or or marry anybody. Oh, let me point this out. I had written some notes last year that I actually disagreed with this year. So I took a piece of paper and I just pasted over it because one, I knew that this would be showing in my Bible study, but two, because I said, I don't ever need to know that uh, that was part of my journey. You know, it was just something that just didn't apply uh, and wasn't what I know to be truth. So I just taped right over it. But what was I saying? I don't even know. Uh, (laughs) We are, oh, you know, your relationship is just like a marriage, right? Like you go on dates 
before you ever get engaged and then you can get married, you know, commit to each other. Okay, so here again, I had lots of notes and I actually ended up putting them on larger pieces of paper, larger notepads. And because they were all kind of falling out, what I did is I just placed them right here and I use a little magnet bookmark to hold it into place. This was mainly so that it wouldn't fall out while I was doing my Bible study, but I have found that, you know what, this works. It keeps it in place. It doesn't add too much bulk. And so that is that is where we're gonna keep it. I probably need to paper clip these in as well. <laughs> so I might do that later. But I definitely invite you to join us. We have a website called heartdive.org and we will also be doing a podcast, the Heart Dive podcast on all of your there's my pen. I was looking for this color today. I use this color a lot and I couldn't find it. Okay. So on every major podcast platform, Heart Dive is up and running. So the first episode is av already available. So I, I definitely invite you to go take a listen to that. And if you like what you hear, if you could already give it a little review, if you like what's in this Bible and you say, hey, I want my Bible to look like that. Not because you're trying to be like me, but because you know that in taking notes, you will learn better and you know you know that you will have more knowledge and more knowledge is more power. And so I invite you to do that, to join us right here on YouTube or on my podcast, Heart Dive. So you can check out the description box for more information. You can check out our website, heartdive.org for all the information on all the platforms. And otherwise, I don't know, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll have a little bit more bulk, but this is what one year or a little less than one year of taking notes in my Bible looks like. So I invite you to come along for the journey next year. I make all of my notes available. I take pictures every day of my Bible. And so if this is something that interested you, I hope you will join the community. We also have a Facebook group, so we'll see you over there. Oh, one last thing. We are following a chronological reading plan and we have got it all mapped out. You can download this if you just sign up on our website we will send you the free downloadable version of our Bible reading plan that you can follow along with. We do have a request into you version to have our Heart Dive 365 Bible reading plan digitally. But for now, Heart Dive 365, which is our one year Bible journey, can be downloaded. And I also give you a one page Heart Dive approach, which is how I study the Bible. So it just gives you some tips on how you can dive heart first into the Word of God. If you enjoyed this video, if you could please give it a thumbs up. Would love it if you subscribe to this channel. If you love Bible study, if you love the Word of God, that is the kind of content we are putting out here. And join us in our podcast for some exclusive content coming up in 2024. Until then, it's your Bible study friend signing out. Aloha. <laughs>